It's been a long time coming from the SC Sakalana, baby. Sometimes it feels like the world is against me. Cause I'm coming from SC. From heartache and pain, struggle and strain. Trying to maintain for the SC. So, mama, don't worry. Hey, I'ma make my dreams happen. Did you know all base coats, top coats, nail polishes, and hardeners are highly flammable? Hi guys, welcome. Welcome back to the Nail Genie SC. How are you? I hope you are well and your family is doing well. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, if this is your first time visiting the channel, consider subscribing. And if you've been here with me and returning, thank you so much. Hit that like button for me. It helps out the channel a great deal. Now let's get into today's video. All right, guys. So in today's video, I'm doing another Watch Me Work. This is one of my clients. You guys seen when we did this set. So now we are, two weeks later, we are removing this set. And we are going to be doing um, a rebalance and a redesign. So, um, here, uh, me and my cousin, we be, uh, <laughs> we be talking about everything under the sun and I get, um, usually I have my table set up, but I don't know what happened this day. I can't even remember or recall, but I was like, something is missing. So of course you're going to see me, um, start filing on her or start to debulk the nail and take off the product, the old product. Not all the way down, but, you know, remove the gel polish layer. And um, then I stop. And, guys, you'll see me go get my um, armrest. Usually I have the armrest out already because I don't keep my um, the armrest I use for my clients. I don't keep it on the table. I actually keep it stored somewhere else um, in my nail room only because it's for my clients' use only. Um, so... Yeah, as you see, I went and grabbed the armrest because I was like, wait, something is not right. So what I wanted to say, guys, is um, your um, the ergonomic ergonomics is very important for you as a nail tech. So what I always do or a nail enthusiast or whatever you are um, saying or calling yourself these days, <laughs> a person who do nails, okay, so, um, I always ask my clients to pull their seats as close to the table as they can, you know, because of course I know that everybody that's sitting in your seat can't pull the, the chair all the way to the table. You know, we are women, you know, we, um, we nice and built nice. So, um, but I always ask them to pull the chair closer to the table as far as they can that makes them comfortable and then i pull my tape my chair to the table as far as i can that makes me comfortable and then i want their because i want their arms to be relaxed over the armrest and you know you find some clients who want to hold on to that armrest they want to hold on to it right so you don't want that client to you want to let your clients know you know relax the body you know wiggle the hands you know relax the body in a nice way you want to let your clients know let me control the hand um you know you just relax this is a service i'm here to serve you um so just relax and let me control the hand so um it's good to have a nice size armrest one for you know your height or whatever how your table is elongated or the width wise of your table um you know if you are a person who is tall or like me guys i am only five foot tall so i'm short and so a lot of times you see a lot of my um upper body leaning on the table is because my table is you know it's an alex unit so it's a nice size table well i'm a short person so <laughs> because i'm shorter than most average people you know, um, I have to, I kind of lean a little bit to rest my body against my table so I can, uh, um, be able to service my clients. So, you know, you just want to make sure your, um, posture 
You want to make sure your client's posture and you want to make sure, you know, the service is good for both of you guys. You don't definitely want to end the service with your clients feeling uncomfortable with either back issues, neck issues, um, you know, soreness, and you don't want to end the service. You feel in that same way. So make sure that ergonomically you guys are positioned um, in a good position facing each other where they can be relaxed, you can be relaxed, and you can have an amazing service. I end up having to purchase a gaming chair because I would be in the lab a lot, um, which I'm not in the lab as much as I used to be, or I call it a lab, but it's my nail area. Um, I would be in my nail area a lot, and so um, the chair I had was so uncomfortable that when I leave um, after being in there 12 to 16 hours a day, um, my back be inflamed. And so um, my husband and I made an executive decision to find a better um, chair for me. So that's when I went looking for a gaming chair. I noticed a lot of creators have gaming chairs um, because if they're going to be sitting in front of their station, whatever they, you know, whatever their um, job or whatever their hobby or whatever their business required them of, they need to be able to be comfortable. And I found that the gaming chair is very comfortable. So that's the chair I have. My clients actually have a chair, no wheels. Um, You definitely want to make sure your clients does not have uh, wheels um, because you don't want them rolling and turning. You want to be able to control their posture, how they're sitting, so you can get through the service and everything can go well. So I made um, an executive decision a long time ago when I first started taking clients to never have a rolling chair for my clients. Um, I, my chair rolls, but they don't have wheels. And the reason why my chair rolls is because I do need to turn and maybe, you know, turn around, grab something out of my drawers, you know, those kind of things. So, yeah, you want to make sure your clients have more of a sturdy chair while you have the chair that is good for you as a tech enthusiast, um, a person that does nails. All right. So, I also have gotten the question lately in my comments about how do I shape curved nails. So, as you can tell, my client nails naturally curved. These, her nails naturally curved. These are not curved tips. We did not start with a curved tip. We started with a straight tip. And my client nails on one of her hands, they naturally curve. It's like, um, as her nails grow out the curve, the formation takes place. Um, we'll debulk, we'll bring some of it down, but most of the time, by the time I see her again, that arch is even higher. So what I do when I am uh, fouling, if you see, if you t rewind that clip back to that hand, is I don't do much fouling in her curve. I just you know, shape up the nail for the side walls. I clean up the free edge. And then I just maybe go underneath the nail to do some maintenance underneath the nail. And the reason why I like to go under the nail before I even start and do all this pre-shaping before I even start application is because my client's natural nails are growing is um, tremendously underneath her uh, nails. And so... One of her, this hand, I believe, is this hand is never, she has not lost any, um, I don't think she's lost any nails for a minute on these nails. And so, uh, on this hand. And so, we haven't had to, um, you know, start new on this hand. Um, but that's why her nails curving so much because her natural nail underneath is curving so I always have to make sure I'm cleaning up underneath the nail to make sure I clean up that natural nail make sure we file that down we clean off that because if you notice if you have a natural nail on a tip and your nails are nor natural nails flare when they grow out they'll start to flare so you will start to see your natural nail coming away from your enhancement you need to clean that up um you don't want to have that because that's going to cause issues in the long run. It can cause 
your nails to lift. It can cause your nails to you to get you know get greenies. You know it can be damaging to your uh nat your natural nails ability to grow in the enhancement. So you want to clean that up. So make sure that, and I've made sure of that, especially since I've had the incident with um my, one of my clients. It wasn't this client. One of my clients with the greeny issues. So um, I always make sure that now I'm flipping their hand. I'm cleaning off and up under that, uh, up under their nails, the underneath side, and you know making sure that their natural nails are not peeping through. Don't have any kind of openings to get moisture or water or anything when they're washing their hands in it. Um, so you're just really fouling away um, that natural nail, pretty much. You're fouling that away. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do um, what I always do. Um, of course, you guys seen that um, I'm using the No Lift Primer. So I actually purchased that from Amazon and I've been using that ever since on my clients. And I've been getting great retention for them. And um, yeah, I use it on myself as well. And I get great retention on my nails as well. So I like it. I started out on my hands first. So when I get a new product or anything that I know I'm going to want to use on my clients, I like to try it on me first. I like to see how that product is going to work um, on me. You know, every hand is different. So remember that, guys. Every client is different. So what works for one client may not work for the other. What works for you may not work for your client. But when it comes to the bonder and primer, I said, well, this no lift primer, I'm going to try it because I've heard great things about it. I follow Top Beauty here on um, YouTube and she raves about it. And so I said, I am going to have to try this. And so trying it changed, um, yes, has changed my nail game um, for my clients. Um, we get great retention. Um, so I don't have to worry about all of that you know, them coming back, you know, they may chip their gel polish, but they're not, they don't have uh, little to no lifting. And, you know, we don't have to take product all the way down and start afresh. You know, it just makes the service much, much easier. So I do highly recommend that no lift primer from Amazon. Now it's pretty expensive. The bottle is very tiny, but it's worth the money. Um, and then when something is worth the money, you willing to put the, you know, put it, the money in it. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm going in and I'm now I'm putting the base coat. Now, my client, guys, as you can see, she don't have as much growth now. Um, but she is adamant. Nails is her life. And she don't play about her nails. So, even when I tell her, I say, because you could have went another week. Yeah, I know, but, uh, yeah, not happening. So, I'm, you know, I'm good with my whatever my clients choose. I do try to help them know that they don't have to, you know, come back every two weeks. But they choose to come back every two weeks. Because in their mind, they like, okay, well, I wore this set two weeks. Just like I, I feel about my own nails I get bored real easy of the design, and it's like, okay, it's time, time to change something out. You know, it's time to do something different. So I get it, right? So um, they get like that, too. they like, okay, well, I want a set, you know, got the compliments, blah, blah, blah. Now it's time to move on. Can I get another set? So she actually bringing me some inspiration today. And, guys, I didn't put the picture up here, but I will tell you um, the artist. So... Let me see if I could find it in my photo gallery. So here I'm starting to do the um, fill. So now I'm doing the infill. And so I'm just taking a small amount of poly gel. And I'm really just filling in at the uh, eponychium cuticle area. And that's what we're going to do here. And I'm going to do that on all 10 nails. So guys, I don't have to walk you guys through um, this process. I just kind of wanted to... Um, talk about some of the questions that I've been getting in my um, comment section and try to help you guys as much as I can um, with answering and responding to those questions. But yeah, so you want uh, you want to make sure 
that when you're doing nails that you are comfortable and your client is comfortable. And the way you do that is, like I said, make sure everything works for your body ergonomically. Then also with curve tips, you don't want to really do too much. You don't really want to really mess into the curve. You just want to file the nail, you know, clean up, you know, side walls, side walls, free edge, and then go underneath the nail just a little slight side, side, and that's it. You don't want to do too much because you don't want to uh, not, you don't want to take away. If your client want a curve tip, right, you don't want to take away from that curved nail by making that tip straight. So it's less, you want to try to make your application as clean as you can, as neat as you can, so you don't have to do a whole lot of fouling. And that way you don't mess up the shape. But for this client, my client, this is her natural nails. This is what her natural nails does. So I have no other choice but to, you know, let's do this. Because she don't, you know, she not, most sometimes some clients say, can you straighten that out? And the way you straighten that out is you have to go, every time they come in for service, you have to be, you have to go underneath the nail and you have to do some extensive filing to try to straighten that out. But it's, if your natural nail is curving at the uh, stress area of your natural nail, it's kind of hard to straighten that out because that's your natural nail. So, um, yeah, so just keep in mind that you know, if the person have a natural arch, you can do less product to make it, you know, more flatter. You can just give them less product of, you know, if it's acrylic, if it's dip, if it's poly gel, if it's hard gel, you can do less product and that'll keep the arch or the keep the curve from being so high if that's something that they don't want. But um, like I said, my client does her natural nails, so she just like, long as the application is clean, long as the design is good, I'm good. I'm not worried about all of that other stuff. So, but if you have a client who don't like that curve in their nails, um, another way to, um, with clients that don't want a curved nail or don't like the curve in their nail is use nail forms. I learned that in school. You can use nail forms. If they have a high hyponychium, you want to cut into that nail form to make it comfortable. But use a nail form and make sure that nail form is straight. And that way it'll help guide the nail to be straight. Okay? Give that look that the client wants. So um, if you don't know about nail forms, I say start practicing on your practice hand or yourself on nail forms and if you have a client who want you know i want a straighter nail even though my nails and my my natural nails have a high arch to it um then doing nail forms using the nail forms will help you tremendously to straighten out that incident but filing filing on a curve uh nail is don't require a lot so don't overdo it is what I'm trying to say. I hope I hope I've helped you guys. If I helped you, please say, yeah, I got it. If not, then say, no, I didn't get it. And, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe another nail tech out here can, you know, elaborate uh, or help you or give you the answer you're seeking or looking for. But that's what I found in doing service on a curved tip. I wear a lot of curved tips, guys, on my own hand. I love the curved tips. I've always loved the curved tips. Even when I was getting my nails done, I would want curved tips nails. I don't know why, but I always did. I think because it gives this um, illusion. And, and I like that illusion that it gave me. So, um, yeah. So, now I'm just giving you what information I do for my clients and for myself and what has helped me on my journey so take it as you will if you like and if not it's okay too i'm not be disappointed but anyway um this uh artist her name is glammed underscore by rose and she's on instagram um i will leave her information down in the description box below but my client sent a picture to me that she done and I'm just going to try to recreate it. I'm not going to 
created to the T, but I'm just going to kind of give the look, um, because I, you know, I always tell my clients, that's the, that's the artist, that's her, and if you're looking for a recreation, um, exactly like hers, then I, I'm not the person, because I don't like to recreate the look to the exact, I like to put a little genie touch on it, if that makes sense. I think we all feel that way sometimes when we recreate recreate and looks. We're not going to get it. It's not going to be a copy-paste thing. It's going to be a, I looked over it. I can kind of give you what you're looking at or looking for, but I can't just give you the exact, I can't give you the exact replica, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah. So I want to shout out to that amazing artist, because my client brought that picture to me. That's the style she wanted for this uh, time around. And that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. Alright guys. So I'm going to stop talking. I've talked enough. I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Watch the rest of this uh, infill application. We're going to add some beats and some music. I want to wish you guys a happy holiday. Um, I am in a collab tomorrow, so you will get an additional video from me tomorrow on Saturday. Um, so, um, yes, make sure you guys check out that collab. We're doing another uh, Night at the Improv Christmas edition. So, um, yes, uh, with Josie, uh, Isms by Josie, she is our host. So it's a lot of amazing women on the roster. Make sure you check out all of these amazing content creators and have your post notification bell turned on so you'll be notified when I get ready to upload my video and when they all upload theirs, okay? So if you're following those creators, make sure you have your post notifications turned on so you don't miss out on um, our Night of the Improv Christmas collab. All right, guys, I want to thank you all for the support to my channel. I truly appreciate you all very much. If you are here and have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting on? If you love all things nails, if you love information, education, informative reviews, hauls, you know, just knowing every facet of nails, I do it all, guys. I do dip. I do poly gel. I do acrylic. I do hard gel. I do um, soft gels. I do uh, builder gels, bottle gels. I do it all. So um, if you are a person just want to see, hey, the ins and outs of what a uh, person who loves nails do, then go ahead and subscribe. You will love it here. And I would love to have you here. All right, guys, so I will see you. I won't be coming back for my final goodbyes. I'm going to let you guys enjoy the video. I hope you all stay to the end of the video and see how beautiful the set turned out. But, oh, I do want to say, you're going to see the airbrush machine. And I may come back. I, I might come back because I do want to explain to you guys what happened with this airbrush. Because I was my intentions was to use the airbrush machine. So I'll probably come back. All right, guys, I'll see you back here in a few Enjoy.
Alright guys, so I told you I'll pop back in. So I had intended to use the airbrush machine for the design that my client had brought me. I thought this is a perfect time to use my airbrush machine. So as you can see here, I'm spraying on my airbrush machine, but I'm not getting anything coming out. So at first, I could see some blue coming out because I have airbrush paints. Now I'm not using any type of gel or acetone mitts. I use airbrush paints. So I have a blue airbrush paint that kind of match what she wanted and so I'm using the airbrush paint and my airbrush machine is not working as you can see I'm it's, I'm having a little trouble so we had to pivot I had to go another way in order to do this design I could not allow just this moment to just you know extend my service we had already been here um long and I how long enough and I had already had held her here um, more long at this time longer than I had intended um, because this set had so much detail to it so I was like okay I gotta think I gotta figure out what's going on I have not used my airbrush machine since the airbrush series that I have here on my channel so I was like okay what's going on with my airbrush machine what I found out once my client left guys is that I didn't properly clean my airbrush machine uh, the last very last time I used it, um, I, my airbrush paint had dried up in the nozzle, um, on the nozzle, on the stem, inside the machine. I had to break the machine completely down. I mean, unscrew the nozzle, unscrew everything from the machine, and pretty much put the machine back together. Um, that, you know, not the machine itself, but the nozzle. Um, because I didn't properly clean it. So that's just a lesson to those who use airbrush machines. If you're going to use your airbrush machine, make sure you properly cleaning it because you don't want to, next time you go to grab it, to use it for a client, you have this issue happening. And also another thing that I did not do, and I looked at the airbrush machine, I turned it on, it was green. Then as soon as I start to try to use it, it was dead. So I should have the night before. I knew I wanted to use it. I should have checked it thoroughly, but I did not. Um, so, yeah. So I learned from my mistake on that, but we end up making it work anyway. I just used a um, sponge and the blue, and we kind of gave the illusion of an airbrush look. But, yeah, I wanted to really use the machine, and I could not because, unfortunately, I didn't do what I was supposed to do um, as the person who owned the airbrush machine. So make sure, guys, that you are properly cleaning your airbrush, airbrush machine. If you're using whatever you're using in your airbrush machine, make sure that you properly clean the nozzle, uh, clean the uh, pin, um, you know, and clean out your cylinder um, cup because that stuff can harden in there or get all in there and get stuck and stay in there and then you 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 know you have the difficulty as I did when it go come time for you to use it again so that's just an FYI all right guys I'm gonna let you go I want to thank you all for watching please don't forget to comment like share subscribe follow me over on all of my socials at the nail genie SC and if you've stayed to the end of the video Go ahead and drop me a blue and white heart in the comment section. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Guys, I'm still doing my uh, binge watch for our watch time for Christmas. Um, but I'm going to extend it. If you've been following me on my community tab, I'm going to extend it out to the 31st of December. And next year, I hope to do it again and start on December 1st. And do it all the way to the 31st of December. Only because I really enjoy um, watching and learning about the subscribers that are subscribed to me. That have their own channels. Um, also, I love to be able to help you guys with your watch time hours. And helping you get closer to that monetization point. As well as I like that you guys help me as well do that when you're watching my videos. So I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate all of you guys. Happy holidays to you all. Blessings to you and your family. Uh, may you eat, be merry, and bright. All right, guys. See y'all in the next video.